Welcome to the Laravel Collections Guide. In this series, we take a look at each of the available methods in the Laravel Collection class and dive deep through examples in explaining what it does. Today, we're going to be looking at Map with Keys. Now, Map with Keys is very similar to Map, with the exception that you are able to override keys, and this can be extremely useful, and you will use this over and over. Let's start with our first example. Let's return a new collection. And inside my array, we will have value one matched up first as a string and value two matched up to second as a string. Just to give us some data to work with. And then I'm going to call map with keys. Now map with keys, just like map, will accept a function and you can pass in an item and of course the key. So you can have access to both. And then inside of here, we need to return an array. Now, what type of array return here? This is entirely up to you. In my case, I'm going to do a very simple swap of values and keys. So I'm going to say item, arrow notation, and key. And let's see the results. So we get the array, but backwards. We see that the values have become the keys, and the keys have become the values. So that's a very useful thing. Now, another nice thing that you can do with map with keys that you cannot do with map is that you can actually get rid of values altogether. And let me show you an example of that. Let's write a simple if statement here. If the key is equal to value two, for example, then we're gonna return an empty array. And sure enough, only first and value one are passed through. If you return an empty array, it simply gets rid of that entry altogether which is pretty cool. That's something that map cannot do. Now, an additional thing that map with keys can do is that you can actually add other values. And this can also be extremely useful. I use this all the time. Let me show you a quick example of that. I'm gonna return a new array. And inside here, I'm gonna say key, match that to my item, right? So, so far, so good. That's exactly the same thing we have. But then I'm gonna say key, and then I'm gonna append a small string here of upper, match that to str to upper, and pass through my item. And let's check out the results. Wow, that's pretty cool. So what I've been able to do is actually add values to my collection through map with keys. So now I have my original value, which I saved in this original line, and then I have this new totally made up and created uppercase string that didn't exist before. And this can be extremely useful. Imagine the possibilities. You could have entirely different currency. You could have entirely different languages. You can do just about anything you need in this manner. And that's extremely useful. Now, one last thing I do want to show you is that map with keys actually returns a new collection. And let me show you that. So data equals collect as we've done before. And we'll say one, two, three, four. And then on my data variable, I'm going to call map with keys, pass in my function, and I'm actually going to return a totally empty array. And that totally empty array should basically delete everything inside there. And then I'm going to return data. What do you expect to happen here? Well, there it is. You actually get your original array back. You do not get the one that has map with keys. And that's because map with keys returns a totally new collection back to you. So if you wanted to contain that in a separate variable, you can, but it does not affect the original collection. And I'm gonna prove that right now. We'll say new collection equals that map operation that we did. And then instead of returning data, I'm gonna return new collection. Let's check out the results. And there we go. Now we get that expected empty array that we were expecting. So keep that in mind when you use map with keys.